Meanwhile, in um, European football, Champions League specifically, RB Leipzig's head coach, Marco Rose, expects peak performance of his team ahead of the Champions League last 16 return leg against Manchester City. Um, I have to say, um, perhaps people expected that the last game was going to result in Manchester City running away with the scoreline, but that's not what happened. They ended up um, drawing that game 1-1, and RB Leipzig have a chance to still get through now. Do you see this team doing well enough to get, get through the challenge of the steam engine that is Manchester City? I think it's going to be a difficult game for RB Leipzig uh, at the Etihad. Um, at, uh, in Germany, Manchester City, I think, could have won that game uh, by number of goals. Um, I saw the game. RB Leipzig didn't come into that game until about 10 minutes towards the end, you know, and of course, they deservedly uh, got an equalizer at the death. Um, I think that City have, have struggled a bit away from home. Um, they haven't, you know, been at their imperial's best, you know, free flowing football, uh, getting the ball into Ellen Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne. Um, so, uh, but, but coming back to the Etihad, I think it's going to be a really, really, really big proposition for RB Leipzig. Uh, like Marco Rosa said, uh, they will have to play some unbelievable football uh, to knock Manchester City out of the Champions League. Um, also, this is a, a, a stage in the Champions League where Pep Guardiola rarely ever crashes out. You know, So, uh, for me, I fully expect City to go through. I think it will be a great game. RB Leipzig um, have had, have been involved in some great games recently. Don't forget... Uh, that they were in action against Bayern Munich uh, in the latter weeks of January. They were in action against Borussia Dortmund in a five-goal trailer uh, just a few weeks ago. So they can score goals. Uh, they welcomed Christoph and Koko uh, back into their side in that game, that first leg against Man City. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, can they score goals? Can they disturb Man City? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. will they get the result that they need uh, to go through to the quarterfinals? I honestly do not think so. I think City will go through. German teams are known for fast-paced, uh, especially the RB Leipzig team, the uh, Red Bull um, team in general. Uh, both the Austrian one and the uh, German one are known for aggressive football. But Mark Rose is saying that a balanced, less aggressive approach towards the Premier League team is needed. Now, uh, City host RB Leipzig in the second leg tonight after the first game, ended in a 1-1 draw. Awareness of City's Erling Haaland will further play an essential role in keeping goals by the English team at bay, Rose stated, as Leipzig had to endure past defeats when facing the forward player. Another year at City would come with significant benefits for Haaland and Guardiola, Rose believes. Now, uh, Haaland always thrives against teams that play a high line, um, a defensive high line, and that is the nature of German football, and he certainly thrived in uh, Germany. He has thrived also in England, scoring 34 goals already. However, this is an opportunity for him to go up against a team, a style of football that he knows how to deal with, and while these guys are saying, while Mark Rose is saying that they will try to go with a more balanced, less aggressive style of football so they don't leave too much spaces, how likely are they going to be able to cope with the pace of Erling Haaland, the ability for the City team to create spaces and chances and force um, uh, the uh, defence to stretch as much as possible to create lanes of opportunity for Lynn Allen to run into? I think, it's, I think it's going to be really difficult for Leipzig, uh, especially when you consider that um, for them to go through, they have to win at the Etihad. Uh, so having to win means you have to get on the score sheet. Uh, and if they are going to get on the score sheet, that, that means they have to attack, right? You know, So at some point in the game, they will most likely have to be open, try to stretch the game. Um, and that plays into Manchester City's hands, right? And of course, into Erling Haaland's hands, like you just mentioned. You know, you give him half an inch and he's way past you. Yeah. You know, so for Marco Rosa, he's saying, look, we're going to play balanced, you know, less aggressive, almost suggesting that they'll probably play with a low block. The problem with that 
for Leipzig is that his players aren't used to doing that. You know, so um, as as much as they can try, um, I think that the mentality of the players, you know, trying to play open attacking football um, might just play into the hands of Manchester City eventually. So uh, for me, I still don't see beyond City. If uh, Leipzig go through, it's going to be a really big upset in, in the Champions League for this season. Um, and for Erling Haaland, yes, I agree with you uh, that, you know, going up against familiar foes uh, from his time in Germany with Borussia Dortmund, you know, probably plays into his hands. He also loves Champions League nights, uh, especially on home ground. Um, so, yes, I won't be surprised if he gets on the score sheet. Uh, for Leipzig, like like Rosa said, if they're going to go through, then it will most likely be the best match of the season. Right. Uh, so, yes, I agree with him in a lot of things. Uh, I don't just think they're going to win. All right. Thank you so much, Wale, for joining me on the show. It's a pleasure having you discuss these stories. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And uh, to everyone at home, work, work wherever you're having the opportunity to catch us. I'm going to leave you with some tennis from the Indian Wells. As Felix Aguirre Aliasime blooded his chin, but still emerged victorious over Francisco Carudolo on Monday, March 13th, to reach round three in Indian Wells. The Canadian swatted at uh, Sarundolo's uh, serve and accidentally hit himself in the chin with his racket, drawing blood. He immediately went to his bench where he was patched up by a medic and made fit to return to the match. The 22-year-old went on to defeat the Argentine 7-5-6-4 to set up a last 16 meeting with Tommy Paul of the United States. Playing at the same time, Paul came back from a set down to eliminate number nine seed Herbert Huckers of Poland, 4 6 6 2 6 4, in front of a lively home crowd. Later in the afternoon, Stan Warinka outclassed um, seventh seed Holger Rune, 6 2 6 7 5 7 5, to book his spot in the third round, where he, the former world number three will face Italy's Yannick Sinner. And Taylor Fritz dazzled a friendly home crowd as he brushed aside Sebastian Baez of Argentina, 6-1, 6-2. Next up for the defending champ is Martin Fuksovic of Hungary. My name is Mikhail Tenber. As always, it's a pleasure having you join us on the show. Remember, life is never boring with some sports. Have a wonderful day.